okay, 9.02 a.m., we'll go to 9.03 a.m., and then we'll either, no, not either, we'll go ahead. Now, uh, it, it's funny that we have your April Fool's Day, but what you'll hear today is no joke at all. No joke. But I make jokes. You know, you know uh, laugh at them, but give them all due certainty. Okay, 30-second uh, countdown to the beginning of this webinar. Okay, 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Good morning, all. Happy April Fool's Day. It is April 1st. And while I make a lot of jokes about a lot of things, what uh, I want to share today is, is actually very serious. We're going to share with you uh, crowdfunding strategies, uh, what works and what doesn't. Crowdfunding success is not like one thing or two things or three things. Uh, success, uh, success in crowdfunding is definitely uh, a combination of, of certain factors. Let's dive in. The first thing you must know is that the path to success in crowdfunding is to take massive action. Uh, so true. Uh, campaigns have this mentality of build it, launch it, and they'll come. I'll get backers, um, I'll raise money all by myself. That is so not true. Number one is that people need to know about your campaign at all. Uh, if they have any, any any shot at all at backing you. In other words, if you go on Indiegogo or, or Kickstarter or Rocket Hub or anywhere else and you don't tell anybody what you're doing, the odds of discovery are very low. And then as a subset of that, the odds of getting backing are even lower. You'll go back uh, two or three years ago that people that ran Kickstarter campaigns could rely on a that community to like you know check out a new campaign, look it over and back it. That's gone today. You know, promotion of crowdfunding is critical because without that, yeah, uh, you can have the, the best campaign, the best product, the best service, the best pricing. It won't matter if folks don't know what you're doing or what you're up to. You're going to be left behind. In fact, true story, this past week, um, somebody that called up our offices here, um, I want to promote our, our campaign. Okay, what's your goal? A million dollars for a new business. Okay, uh, what are you going to do to attract people to give you a million dollars? Well, nothing. I want free promotion. I said, well, you can pay us you know, two ninety nine, four ninety nine, and get real attraction, or hope for the best. Uh, long story short, the guy uh, did uh, bow out. His campaign got canceled because he didn't want to spend a dollar on getting anybody to look at his campaign, looking for a million dollars in funding for a new business. Therefore, we have to be clear that promotion of, of crowdfunding is critical. If you don't do that, then you're missing out. Uh, even though promotion is critical, what's as important at least is that you know, your campaign is active. In other words, when you launch your crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo, Kickstarter, Rocket Hub, GoFundMe, whatever, you know, keep your campaign fresh. Post updates, reply to comments, add new goals. You know, build your team. You know, every day you must do something. And the core here is of go, go, go is all around the fact that that's the go, go factor right there. 
So if you're an Indiegogo and you're doing a campaign, you know, everything here described in point three is critical to success. Updates, team management expansion, comment replies, uh, gallery updates, new stretch goals. Keeping the campaign fresh in Indiegogo is very rewarding because every time you do that, you get a bigger boost on your go-go -go factor, and that does give a lot of uh, credibility to your campaign because you can get featured on the uh, Indiegogo you know, uh, front page, uh, be uh, highlighted in emails, so definitely want to make sure that you're giving activity to your campaign. Uh, even about Indiegogo and the go-go factor, on Kickstarter also, you know, if you promote your campaign far and wide and people you know, get word of it and they land there and they see like a stale campaign, uh, updates for a week old or longer, uh, and all these things here point to a campaign without care, you're going to lose backers because people that want to give you money want to feel good about doing so. As a result, uh, if the campaign is stale, old, or outdated, people that want to, you know, give you money might, you know, think twice because, well, this guy doesn't care about his campaign. He's not bothering, so why should I? Yeah, uh, the big takeaway is devote time to your campaign every single day. Every day, do something, add something, post something, update something. Energy creates energy. Now, we are big fans of promotion. That's because we sell those services. However, far beyond you know, want to make money on people is the reality that if you don't promote your campaign, you can't get noticed by enough people, you won't get enough momentum, and your campaign will fail. And that should never be happening by anybody voluntarily. So we're brought to the definition of PR. The answer here on the screen is very, very informative, very academic, and, and it's right on. You know, public relations is the strategy of communicating a process between, you know, you and the publics. Publics is pluralized intentionally because publics are audiences. Uh, you don't have one. No one has just one. There are many different places and opportunities to reach people because people buy or back projects for different reasons and by sometimes very different motivations. Now, this answer is a, a lot more direct and very clear. Publicity is giving someone a reason to talk about you, and that's critical. It's also why publicity and advertising are not the same things. Publicity is that people are talking about your project. They're creating buzz around you. They're talking you up on their own. They weren't paid to do so. They weren't compensated. They like what they're seeing. They, they think it's really cool. And the word is spread. That's publicity. Now, back to our process, how we approach you know, PR and promotion is very different. We're kind of like an old school PR company using the modern, you know, platform of crowdfunding. Back in 2012, our founder uh, put down a formula for crowdfunding success in terms of getting a lot of people and those eyeballs locked onto a crowdfunding campaign so they can look at it and decide to back it. Over the years, we have perfected our, our technique and improved our services so that today we offer three core branches of service, which are all designed to bring more people to your project. The first core is the good old-fashioned tried and true press release. One of our writers on staff We'll look over your campaign carefully and pick out the highlights and the key points for inclusion in your press release. Once it's written, you'll get a, a look at the draft of it, you approve it, and it goes out. We want to make sure that 
as many reporters, bloggers, journalists, and just the public look at it because uh, a lot of our clients get you know published in the Miami Herald, the Boston Globe, the LA Daily News, um, news and radio and uh, papers and TV across the country uh, see our releases day and night. So we wanted to get the public at large involved. Looking beyond, you know, the current is that you know, our writers will also look at SEO in terms of exactly how we can get your press release found on Bing, Google, and Yahoo. You know, one day later, one week later, one month later, because your press release is out there forever, and it's very important that you realize that your press release is a working uh, extension of your business uh, beyond your your campaign to the future at large, and we'll explain. As I already pointed out, after your, your drip is reviewed and approved by you, it goes out to the AP Newswire, Release Wire, and Reuters. Uh, from there, it can go viral really quickly because reporters are always looking out for news. Beyond that, we also put your release out there to the public. Uh, this way, like if someone is reading the uh, newspaper um, in, say, Houston, Texas, or um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or Miami, San Diego, uh, Las Vegas, you know, they see release. Beyond that is that we take your release right to media influencers directly. We don't rely on newswires only. Clients at Plus and Above get the benefit of having us take your press release right to media directly so that we uh, not only get you on the newswires, but we also want to get you in front of media personalities that can decide to write about your campaign and feature you. Uh, the best part of all that is that our press releases, amongst many others, we get your video included and your pictures. Uh, visuals do sell. And again, part of my being hoarse, I'm talking a week on, on uh, webinars, so I'm a little hoarse today. Forgive my hoarseness and please focus on the message. I've been talking for hours and hours day by day. Okay. As mentioned earlier here, your release goes out to the the uh, the, the search engines. So anybody Googling you know uh, your product, service, or idea, um, you know best core for springtime, best beach core new horror film, what have you. Your press release is in there along with everything else in Google, Bing, and Yahoo. That means that people looking for what you're offering or have offered or will offer, they're going to find you a month from now, tomorrow, this weekend, next week, um, summertime, Thanksgiving, what have you. Your press release is out there working for you all day long every day. And that's eternal. Once we do your release and it's published, it's out there forever and ever. Now that leads to things that can really go wild for you guys. Reporters, journalists, and bloggers, producers, and radio hosts are always looking out for new news. Uh, in fact, as I tell people, there are, are hosts here in Las Vegas that cruise the news every morning they come into the station, they look up news that's going on today, what's interesting, current, trendy, fashionable, or funny, like April 1st today, and they want to feature it on their show. Uh, in fact, this morning, driving over to um, the gym, I heard from Brittany uh, from 92.3 here in Las Vegas, and she does it every morning. This morning's story was, okay, a uh, couple of your ears, free pussy. Why? This guy wants to give his cat away. The cat has a, uh, a lazy eye. The cat is not very healthy. Needs daily injections. So Brittany found this news story and talked it up to about 1.2 million people across L Las Vegas on pet adoption. And this goes on every day in every station, in every market across America and beyond. The result of our 
PR is that our clients get picked up on national and local television, papers, and radio because all these reporters, journalists, TV hosts, radio hosts are looking for new news. We want to get you to be considered as that new news. What happens next is that if we get you enough pick pickup, which does happen uh, quite often, you can get a, a really viral pickup. For example, <clears throat> again, my frog voice, pardon me. Uh, <clears throat> on point three below, we have a client that was on Fox News last month for his you know, caffeine bracelet called the Jewel, J-O-U-L-E. The Jewel was amazing in that it delivers caffeine all day long via direct delivery to the bloodstream, eliminating you know, coffee, Red Bulls, you know, five-hour energy drinks, and so on. What happens from there could be amazing. He got TV, radio, he got press everywhere because of this one cool product, and it all began with PR. Uh, back to what I said earlier today, uh, just now, is that your press release is truly a message in a bottle. That's because your lease is out there forever. So a client of ours, uh, these points here are all true. Uh, point one, we had a client for a slow power cooler. He was back there in 2014, and his campaign failed. He did not even get close to his goal. However, we got a call about a year ago from the people from as seen on TV. They found the press release. They were intrigued by the product. I wanted to talk to him about a marketing deal, distribution of his solar powered cooler. So his campaign failed, the goal was not reached, but what happened after that was truly amazing. Similarly, a, a local reporter from CBS in Mexico was doing a story on high school head injuries. She found the press release for a client offering this new kind of protection for head injuries, a new kind of a helmet. And uh, I can't recall if this campaign had to go or not. Nevertheless, because of our PR for him, he was on TV across New Mexico, reaching millions of people about his equipment. Now, point three is my favorite one. Last weekend was you know, Good Friday, Easter, and uh, most you know, channels, reporters, journalists, etc., are looking for tie-ins to Easter, Good Friday, uh, miracles, resurrection, what have you. So Elijah Stevens got a lot of good pickup for his campaign at Kickstarter. The thing is that it ended back in December of last year. He actually uh, went beyond his goal, which is awesome. And yet, you know, four months later, like December to, to just, yeah, let's see, January, for, three months later, he got picked up again on media. He was featured on Fox News. And if you Google the term here quoted, filmmaker examines phenomenon and miracles project, he got fresh, brand new, prime time, grade A coverage for his project that already ended successfully. So what Fox News did is that they drove traffic to his website where he was taking online pledges directly from his website and not Kickstarter. So the man sold books. The, the man raised more money for his film project, even though his campaign ended over three months ago. That's the power of PR at work. You have this ongoing potential for dialogue, engagement, and coverage that is not found or possible in any other way. Uh, and that leads to this slide. PR can be a ter terrific time bomb. News of your campaign is out there forever. And you know, you're discovered, rediscovered, and rediscovered all the time. No one knows when or why or how, but when you're always out there, it can always happen to you. That's because Media members are fickle. They want to cover what they want to cover when they want to cover it. And back to Elijah, 
his campaign in December, but the whole miracle Easter thing tied in, and three months later, he got a lot of coverage. That's PR at work for you. And you're way into the party of PR and getting potentially endless coverage, you know, month in and month out, year of a, of a year, is to get into PR via hiring a firm like ours that does PR and gets you noticed. Big, 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 big difference. Uh, beyond the press release, which is always out there working for you, uh, we get emails all day long, morning, noon, or night. We're emailed from reporters from Cosmo, the New York Times, Business News Daily, the Washington Post. Uh, we get requests all day long for every topic you can think of, uh, from 20 kinds of you know, sexual topics to uh, pediatricians wanting to sound off on uh, autism and prevention of, of that through vaccines to uh, people that use social media, to, uh, I mean, landlords, rental agents, real estate professionals, buying and selling houses, uh, flying cars. I, I mean, it's, it's all out there. We get this all day long, and we want to connect our requests from reporters with our clients. Therefore, we are going to always filter out our requests and connect you with the right opportunities that get you more media and more PR. The result is, is that if a reporter uses you in their story, you get a free plug in their article or their TV show or radio broadcast. The result is you get a lot of credibility, you get a fresh audience, and you're going to always be getting new people to your campaign because you're always hitting new audiences. And that's what PR does for you. You know, if you're mentioned in uh, an article in Cosmo about um, your neck brace for women on the job at work all day to help posture and whatnot, uh, you're now getting a lot more people looking at your campaign because Cosmo is telling the world that you matter. And advertising can't do that for you. You can spend $1,000 a day on Google and Facebook. You will never get the kind of credibility you'll get from a magazine appearance, a TV appearance, a radio guest spot. Because when you're on TV or on radio or in an article, you have credibility that advertising can never give you. The third core is actually uh, quite fascinating. Because most folks don't quite get social media, how it works. Uh, a lot of people know that it matters. Twitter, Facebook, you know, uh, Google+, LinkedIn, Instagram, you got to be up there. What most folks don't know is how that happens and how it works. Your audience is going to be a key factor because the more people you're reaching, the more people you can engage. And that's all about people becoming uh, backers potentially. What we do is that we leverage our, our, our identities on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, Instagram, etc., to start conversations that get you talked about. Uh, and we want that going on all day long. Like today, April Fool's Day, we're doing a lot of April Fool's Day related you know, promotions and pranks and you know plugs that get us noticed and get our clients noticed. We're going to have a lot of fun today, so uh, do follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, at Twitter, it's iCrowdFunBuzz, and Facebook, it's CrowdFunBuzz. You'll have a great time. You'll laugh the whole day hard and love what we're doing next for our clients and for you, too. On Twitter, we're growing uh, totally beyond belief. We're adding people by the rate of like 20 or 30 per day every single day because we're giving out good conversations, good commentary, and we're, we're commenting on things that are topical and, and, and very contemporary. Uh, beyond that, we're also engaged in Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, and Instagram. Uh, we do leverage these platforms heavily and make sure that we put our best foot forward to putting up your message to all these different people uh, whose platforms in the best we can. Uh, this is a screenshot from Twitter uh, oh, sometime last year. If you look at the different comments and favorites and retweets, 
you can see here that on Twitter, and gosh, this has got to be going on six months ago, uh, we have constant engagement, continual activity, continuous, you know, attention to our clients because we're always talking to the audience, the public, engaging them. They get intrigued. They want to follow us. And that's where we get favorites, retweets, and always get new followers day in, day out because we're topical on Twitter and, and all the rest, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+. And that leads to you getting more benefit because every time you're favorited, that gets you more audience. When you're retweeted, you get more audience. Uh, and that brings more and more people to your project, and that brings you more backers that could back your project. We're always doing things differently in social media. We never sit still. We're always watching reaction, and we're always tweaking our, our message. We don't just do the same thing day in and day out. We want to make things fresh, different, and interesting. That leads to us being able to attract more people because we're doing out, we're doing more messaging and more reach out across different topics in different ways. The goal is that we want your project becoming like a party. We want more and more people showing up all the time because more people means more backers. This is my favorite either or question. Advertising or PR? Both. They both matter, they're both important, they're both effective, but for, for two very different reasons. Uh, most people confuse the two as being the same, that they actu actually see advertising and PR as being interchangeable, but they're not. Advertising is what you pay for when you want to be noticed in the paper, next to the article, or during a commercial break on TV. PRs will get you in the article in the newspaper or on TV or on radio as a guest. The result is that PR can give you credibility as a recognized respect authority. You can't get that with advertising, and it's true. You can spend $1,000 a day and never get the credibility that you can get from one good hit through an article uh, in a magazine, newspaper, or mentioned on radio or television. Uh, advertising PR work together very well, but they're very different. Uh, now, the one thing in common is that advertising PR, the goal is getting more eyeballs on your project. However, there's one big, big, big distinction, actually two. The first one is credibility. If you're in the paper, if you're on the TV show, if you're a radio guest on the radio show, you've got credibility. You've got authority, recognition. But beyond that, it's also a matter of advertising is ethereal, meaning that when your ad stops on Facebook or Google or whatever platform you're using, when your ad stops, you stop messaging. PR is permanent. It's forever. That's because when you stop running your ads, you know, you're done with your messaging. When you're on TV or, in a, or an article or in a magazine or newspaper or a TV show, radio show, it's out there forever. People can find you on a podcast, on Fox News. They can find you on Entrepreneur Magazine, Gizmodo, you, know, you name it, because the PR never goes away. It's out there working for you 24-7 every day of the week. In a perfect world, do both. But if you can't afford to do advertising and PR, then we try to go with PR because PR can pay off much, much more handsomely because of that eternal payoff in presence, messaging, and outreach that advertising just can't provide. However, advertising can be done by yourself, and here is exactly how you do it. Uh, we're not fans of Facebook ads, although we're running some right now because we have a very long-term goal. We're a brand like Delta Airlines, Bank of America, Coca-Cola, Verizon, Sus Palace, and the rest. You know, we don't have a short-term goal that we must raise X dollars by Y deadline or else. So we run ads to Facebook once in a while, but however, for the most part, 
for crowdfunders, we don't feel it's a, it's a good bet. However, if you must do Facebook ads, if you feel that you have no choice in the matter, don't hire a company, do them on your own. Facebook does make it simple to do an ad. In fact, the last week we've done ad creation and adjustment and editing and had an ad go from inception to creation to approval and running in actually 15 minutes. Uh, true story, we began a new Facebook campaign at the, end of April, at the end of March. We began, I think, this past Tuesday. And the campaign was created, ready, reviewed by Facebook directly, and approved in 15 minutes. Ad out there. Now with Google, it's a bit more complicated. It might take a bit longer for your campaign being created and reviewed and approved, but maybe an hour. Uh, however you go, if you use Google and Facebook, you're covering almost every set of the Internet possible, and you can do it by yourself. And again, it doesn't take long, it's not hard to do, and it's not expensive. Now, once you do that, are you done? The answer is no, not exactly. After you have your ads out there on Google and Facebook, check status at least three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. You know, check how your dollar is working for you. If you don't check your ads all day long, at least morning, noon, and night, you're not going to be sure about effectiveness, how much money you're spending, your ROI, your expected action from dollars spent, and then you might burn cash fast because you're not paying attention. However, you can log on and check your ads uh, over breakfast, then I get a lunch, and then I get a dinner, and it's no big deal. It won't take long at all, and yeah, please don't tell me you're too busy because the whole process is very quick, very simple, and you could do it while you eat your lunch, your, your sandwich, your dinner, your soup, your omelet, and that will include adjusting your advertising or doing ad rewrites to help you get a better performing ad. Now, why do I advocate this? Because you'll save thousands and thousands of dollars compared to what expensive companies charge you for advertising. In the crowdfunding space, some firms will charge you anywhere between five to fifteen thousand dollars up front. I'll say that again. Advertising agencies for crowdfunding will ask you between five to fifteen thousand dollars in cash by a bank wire certified bank check or credit card up front and then they'll want anywhere between five or ten or fifteen percent of what you raise so if you run your own ads you will save yourself thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars compared to hiring a firm to do it for you and to be quite frank having seen them in action and seen them working they're really not worth that money they ain't no big deal uh, that leads into the, this next uh, slide from our experience and mine especially substantially all of the crowdfunding promotion websites you're going to find are bogus one way or another how do we know a lot of people end up hiring us after they paid some other website to help them promote their campaign and then they went on to you know share their story with us uh, I call it like like therapy they had to vent their frustration they had to vent out their anger they were cheated lied to misled um, they paid these firms five hundred dollars or five thousand uh, dollars they were given lip service but never anything tangible. They never got reports like we offer our clients. They never got any, any way to know for sure that what was paid for was delivered. And what might shock you is that how so, some sites just lie blatantly. They'll lie about expertise, experience. They'll actually make up fake identities with fake names and ripping off pictures of real people off the internet. Uh, they'll brag about uh, patents they don't have, trademarks they don't own, 
uh, testimonials that are, are actually also fake and fictional, and some claim to be out there since 2008, 9, 10, etc. And it's really very sad because a lot of people don't know any better. They don't know how to fact check this or verify this information or do any of their own independent verification to see if these actual websites uh, are claiming things that are true. The long story short is that these websites are churning out BS uh, thick and high to lure in the uninformed and the optimistic and then these poor folks get robbed blind. And if you doubt my claim, you can uh, give me an email and I will send you a link to a man, that a grown man, who was on the, on the brink of crying and a mental breakdown on the phone with me. Uh, after admitting he signed this big fancy contract for $10,000, he wired them, bank wired, not credit card, not money order, not, not check, he wired them $5,000 and he got taken for a big expensive ride that led nowhere. So warning boys are, uh, this first block here is very, is very good. Uh, they do a lot of great sharing on crowdfunding. They have great articles and they share links to the tips that work, good advice, and also for some reason this individual, man or woman, boy or girl, American or foreign, they have this like surgical approach to dissecting a, a, a scam operation in ways that are very impressive. Uh, the next link is to uh, Joe Daniels. He wrote an article that did a very similar job in totally deconstructing a, a crowdfunding scam uh, all around promotion where uh, pay us X number of dollars and you know you'll be guaranteed X or Y we have a great history, we have a great background, we're doing this a long time, and the fact is it's total, total bunk. Uh, that's bunk, I could say BS too. Uh, thirdly, we did a crowdfunding uh, blog article regarding a buyer's guide. It's a lot more kind and a lot more, um, what's the word I'm thinking here? It's a lot, it's a lot kinder to these other websites but it does make you think. Uh, between these three websites here, if you read over all the articles listed and you do your own homework, you'll be fully empowered to make your own decisions uh, fairly and effectively. By the way, if you don't want to write these down, you can email me, Howard at crowdfundbuzz.com, and I'll be happy to send you these links to these different articles and, and blogs so that you can explore yourself later on. Long story short, there is research out there, there is evidence, there is do's and don'ts that you can use to your fact checking. Um, make sure you do your homework before you take out your credit card or do a bank wire. Uh, dig and dig deeply uh, and dig deeper still and do your checking. Um, there are shocking stories out there, people that got ripped off to 50 bucks, 500, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. Uh, whether you want to spend a little money or a lot of money, do not, you know, spend a dollar before you do some serious fact-finding research to make sure that the money you're giving is going to get you actual results, effort, and opportunities. Uh, bottom line, there here is reality check. Uh, again. This is not my opinion, it's my experience. There are fewer than five honest companies out there that advertise services to promote your campaign. And don't take my word for it, do your own checking, your own research, and if you check enough, dig deep enough, and review enough, and think enough, you will find out that my claim is correct, all by yourself. But whatever you do, Make sure you do your homework and your checking because I don't want this to happen to you. I don't want you to have to worry about money being wasted and then calling up Visa or MasterCard for a chargeback request or you bank wire some company in California, in which case your money is gone. Uh, I don't want your money flying out the window. I want you to spend money wisely. 
I want you to make a good investment. I want you to be very um, wise about your choices because it could not only mean you know, losing money or making money, it could mean you're paying a scam artist or a con artist for uh, totally bogus services while you lose campaign time that you could be used otherwise in getting your campaign goal reached. Now here's the good news. Uh, not all doom and gloom. Uh, I want to compare and contrast starting a business the old-fashioned way to crowdfunding. According to Bloomberg, uh, 8 of 10 entrepreneurs who start a business fail in the first 18 months. That is an 80% failure rate. By comparison to crowdfunding, the failure rate is actually better at 65%. Now here's the part that, that's most exciting. Starting a crowdfunding campaign is usually far, 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 far less expensive than opening a new restaurant or a store or a website or a business where you're putting capital risk to the tune of 5000 10000 15000 depending upon the business type, the business structure, you know, you know, bricks and mortar, you know, clicks, etc. The takeaway is that, like most things in life, it all depends how you look at it. So ending on a good note, we're going to now wrap up our presentation and open the floor to questions. Uh, we will be happy to, to chat about anything with anybody at all. You can raise your hand or type out your question. We'll be happy to answer them in due course and give you all due elaboration on any point you want to raise. So go ahead and raise your hand or just type out your question in the question box and we will dive right in. Looks like no questions. I do a great job. I have never had a question yet. However, I'm going to leave it open for uh, 30 more seconds and do a countdown. Uh, crowdfunding questions about anything, perk pricing, promotion advertising, um, the go-go factor, uh, team members, anything at all. Uh, it's, it's a free forum, forum for questions. Ask away, anything at all, any topic of crowdfunding at all. Okay, counting down to 15 seconds, taking a last call for crowdfunding questions. Any question, promotion, advertising, management, daily activity, um, comments, gallery updates, crowdfunding pitch videos, uh, appropriate media, ask away. Looks like we are going to be doing a, a, a countdown. We're going to end the, end the webinar in 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, no more questions from the audience. Thanks for participating with us. We're doing it again today, uh, this afternoon. Come on back if you'd like to. You're more than welcome. Have a great day and thanks for your time and attention.